here. I'm actually seated in my office in Redfern on um, Gadigal um, country. So welcome, Maggie. How are you this afternoon? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me, Narelle. I would also like to take the moment to acknowledge that the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung people are the traditional custodians of the land I am talking to you on today. Thank you to the power of the internet. <laughs> so I started on Instagram when I was in year nine, when my friends were all jumping on the app. So I was about, you know, 13 years old or so. And from there, you know, I would share my outfit photos and share what I was loving. And that actually led me to collaborate with a few fast fashion brands, meaning that they would send me clothes and I would wear them. Of course, as a teenager, that's something I was completely giddy about. Wow, free clothes. How, how fun. But after a few years, there was something that didn't feel right. But the weird thing was, it never felt like it was personal or that I, that I was playing a part in that. And I think it was about the end of 2019, so I am still relatively new to the space, that I decided to grapple with that uncomfortableness and kind of interrogate that further. And I was like, hang on, I'm uncomfortable here for a reason. And that made me really switch and um, turn to sustainability. <music> How should we categorize all of those things? What does ethical, slow, sustainable, mm. circular, what does that all mean? And then I want to preface this by saying that I've actually never had any education in sustainability or fashion. I am a writer, but like a lot of people maybe listening here today, I'm a vested consumer. I have interest in the matter um, as we all should actually as we all participate in the fashion economy we are all hopefully wearing clothes here today so uh, <laughs> we all have a part to play so to get to your question the thing is all these beautiful sounding words like sustainable fashion eco-friendly environmentally friendly green they don't really have meaning there is no hard and fast definition or regulations that brands need to meet to use these words so here um, as you mentioned before they are in a lot of ways um, turned into buzzwords they are greenwashing uh, words that sometimes brands will use to make themselves look more environmentally friendly than they perhaps actually are I do think there is um, kind of a, like a spectrum that we should be looking at um, in terms of you know which terms are better than others I really like you mentioning circular fashion in there as well because I think that's um, kind of the space that we are stepping into more in terms of the fashion um, economy and looking at circularity because it's important it's not just how we buy our clothes that's not where the process ends it's how a material source what happens at the end of its life we need to fully I guess deal and grapple with its whole like clothing's um, entire life cycle and really have a look at each brand's um, downstream and upstream process if you like and the full life life cycle of, of the garment and I think that that's what consumers actually want now consumers mm. are more mindful than ever before um, of, of what their brands um, stand for um, and not only, not just what they put on their website, but actually how they do that in, in every day. So I think that that's um, really important. I'm glad that we're talking more about what happens to clothes after we deem them, you know, not suitable enough for our wardrobes anymore. When we throw something out to landfill, it's it's not thrown away. It just stays there forever. What's in landfill isn't, you know, it's some far away distant place that magically disappears. No, this is our reality. This is our planet. So I do think um, looking at recycling is just so important in terms of our clothing. Uh, I think it's very much, it's easy to kind of, let's say, even um, donate clothes, which is a great option to have but in Australia fewer than 20% of clothing that is donated is actually sold so it's not this one size fits all magical response we need to look at how um, yeah recycling fits into it as well. I like your, your analogy around landfill because I think it's important um, to know that we're actually going to run out of landfill in this mm. country um, in the next 20 or 30 years so this is why it's making um, the whole what waste hierarchy even more important than it was um, before and of course um, the first part of that um, waste hierarchy is reduce and then the second being mm -hmm. reuse and then um, the last um, being recycling 
it is great to see brands becoming quite proactive or I guess um, innovative with some of their new technologies that they're implementing. But at the end of the day, recycled polyester can't be recycled further. That is it again. So after we have that garment, it is chucked to landfill and can't um, naturally decompose. So it isn't this magical solution that we should be relying on at all. I love that you mentioned the hierarchy before of reduce. Like where is this conversation about reducing our fashion intake? I think that's something um, that, uh, you know, it's it's hard. Like I like I am a young person who loves fashion. It is hard to um, to just tell someone to stop shopping for clothes or whatever but it is something that I think we need to really tackle head on um, in our fast fashion conversations.